So I just read that 4,153,237 people got married last year. I'm no math doctor, but shouldn't that be an even number? Let's talk about it. This week, Life Group is all about communication because communication is the key to a healthy marriage. Marriage is what brings us together today. Reality time, women talk more than men, right? So men, you will never have a healthy marriage if you don't learn how to talk to your spouse. To help us with this, I'd like to go through Gary Smalley's six levels of communication. The first two levels aren't really that satisfying, and to have a healthy marriage, you need to get to the sixth level of communication. The first level is small talk. We do it all the time. It's conversation about the weather or about your favorite sports team. The second level is sharing facts. These usually start with, did you know, or they tell someone about an event or sometimes it's a story. Levels one and two are not satisfying but people avoid level three because the level three is where people start to share their opinions. How many of you married someone who has opinions? Raise your hand. Okay, so everybody married is raising their hands. 100% of you. This one is risky because this is where disagreements can happen. Wouldn't it be great if you were married to a person who wanted you to win every argument? Yes. We all want to be married to a person like that, but we don't want to be like that. But why not? There's a good chance that one of you could actually do this. It's possible that one of you could learn to get excited about allowing your spouse to win a disagreement. My wife actually does this and we have a great marriage because of it. What if I learned to do it too? What if I learned how to help my wife win our disagreements? And what if I did that on a regular basis? One of the keys to healthy disagreements is never call names. Just decide that you will never again call your spouse a name, not even jokingly. It's not worth it. And the third level is the doorway to deeper intimacy. If you can learn to disagree in a healthy way, in a gracious way, the sky is the limit. If you can learn to disagree, and it's going to happen, you're going to disagree, If you can learn to do it in a sacrificial way, you will have potential to have a great marriage. And the ironic ironic thing is that disagreement is healthy if you learn how to do it sacrificially. I think one of the best things that happened in Darcy and I's marriage is very early on, we had some really good fights. I mean, they were really bad at, they were those times of lots of yelling and exaggerated language. But because we were able to humble ourselves and come to a compromise, we were better because of the disagreements. Level four is feelings. These are things like, I feel like you don't spend enough time at home. I feel like you don't value my opinion. I feel like you don't help out around the house often enough. Level five is needs. Strive to understand your spouse's needs. Don't just appease them by giving them what they want. Figure out what fuels them and give it to them before they ask for it. And then level six is beliefs. Find out what your spouse believes, what they believe about their life, what they believe about themselves, what they believe about God, about what is most important and valuable to them, and support those beliefs if you can. Marriage is the blend of both of who you are. It's the two of you becoming one person. Learn the core of your spouse and blend those values into yourself. And when that blend happens, affection increases. Stop here and answer the first three questions and then push play. Mark 10, six through eight, says, but God made them male and female from the beginning of creation. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one, since they are no longer two, but one. 
One of the first things we do in counseling is to help a person be honest with themselves about what they are struggling with. The same is true with marriage. If two people have become one, they are most healthy when there is a complete transparency and vulnerability with each other. Communication requires vulnerability. It requires us to be honest with our spouse about our feelings, our opinions, our needs and beliefs, and it requires us to value those things in our spouse. I want us to end this session with a little exercise. So grab a piece of paper, write answers to the following four questions, then give that piece of paper to your spouse. Then spend the next week trying your hardest to fulfill those requests for your spouse, even if you don't think they're legitimate. When communication is open and honest, intimacy increases. And my guess is a higher number of people than normal will have a smile on their face this Sunday. So I'll see you in church.